As I mentioned, the GMM estimation of the spatial error model is, is quite complex. And uh, it's a, a very important result in the literature. The, the initial result was developed in, in two papers in 1989 and 1999 by Collegian, Harry Collegian and Ingmar Pucha. Uh, and they refer to this method as generalized moments. Now, one limitation of the generalized moments uh, approach was that it did not provide for an asymptotic variance matrix for the nuisance parameter, the spatial or the regressive parameter, and it also did not allow for heteroscedasticity. So it was a very um, elegant solution to the problem in that it set up a set of moment equations which were solved and yielded a consistent estimate for the nuisance parameter. And as we've seen before, that's really all we need to then carry out feasible generalized least squares. Uh, however, the lack of robustness to heteroscedasticity is, is a real problem. So in a series of new papers in around published around 2010 and 2011, um, they developed a new, more general set of moment conditions that did allow for heteroscedasticity. And of course, homoscedasticity is found as a special case. And again, is the same principle. They set up a set of moment equations and the uh, estimate for the spatial parameter is found as a GMM solution to the moments equations, just as we've seen when we discuss the general principles that will consist of two steps, an initial step, which is an unweighted minimization, and then you use the parameter to build the weights, and then a second step where you actually use the weights. So, as I warned you, all this stuff is very heavy mathematical and kind of hard, heavy in the notation, and I won't spend too much time on it. You have the equations in your slides and also in the um, Modern Spatial Econometrics book. So, under heteroscedasticity, there are two sets of moment equations, and these moment equations are found by uh, solving the expected values for cross products of the error terms and their spatial lags. Now, these error terms are um, not the error terms in the regression specification, but are the so-called idiosyncrat idiosyncratic error terms. So, if we have a regression specification, let's say x beta plus u, and then the u has a spatial autoregressive form. U is a function of lambda w u plus an error term epsilon. This epsilon is the one that we focus on. The epsilon is the one where we now allow um, heteroscedasticity. So the, um, the way we approach this is we um, take these cross products. For example, if you take the, the second one, 1 over n times the expected value of the spatial lag of the idiosyncratic errors transposed times the original error. So this is a, a sum of squares of the spatial lags of the errors with, with the original errors. And as we've seen a couple of times before, whenever we have a, a, a sum of squares like that, which is really a scalar, we can replace it by a trace and then move things around. And you, without actually going through these derivations, you can see that we get the result of zero because the trace of the matrix W is zero. The, tra the matrix W, the spatial weights matrix, by construction has zeros on the diagonal. So that's how we get this zero. And then um, the first equation is a little bit more complicated, but again, you see this trace operator there, and then because we allow for heteroscedasticity, we have the individual variances of the error terms in there in the term E epsilon I squared. So this is the point of departure. So the point of departure is come up with some moment conditions, and then we'll 
simplify the notation a little bit so that we don't have to drag these complex expressions around. And then we will replace these um, error terms that we actually don't observe by the residuals in the regression um, model and solve the moment equation. So uh, Kalijan and Prucha introduced some simplifying notation essentially to allow these two equations to be written as something equal <coughs> to zero. The second one you can see it very obviously the weights is W so we set A2 equal to W and the first for the first equation we introduce A1 which is um, W prime W and minus the diagonal of the um, the column elements. So the uh, these are actually the um, diagonal elements consists of the sum of squares of the elements in each column. So each diagonal element cons con corresponds to an I and the I is the elements in a, a column of the weights matrix. So then um, with this notation um, we rewrite the moment equations as two equations in the error terms, one with A1 and the other one with A2. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is set up in general for the heteroscedastic case and the homoscedastic case follows as a special situation. So um, we still are nowhere because these equations are written in these unobservable error terms. So we now replace the error terms by their expression in terms of the error in the regression. So the epsilons are the error terms in the spatial autoregression of the u. So by definition, epsilon equals u minus lambda w u, or the spatially filtered u. And to operationalize this expression, um, we plug this into the equations. And why does this operationalize them? First of all, it includes the parameter lambda, which is what we want. And second, it uses the error term in the regression, which we can replace by the residuals. So we have these two equations now, and they are functions of the residuals and the parameter lambda, and we need to solve these equations. And um, applying what we've seen before about the general principle of GMM, we can always get a consistent estimate uh, for lambda from some least squares criterion. Uh, notice there's only one parameter, but we have two equations. But then we can get a generalized method of moments estimation by using a weighting matrix, and specifically using an optimal weighting matrix, which is the variance of the moment equations. So the estimation strategy then consists of two steps. The first step, and I should be specific, this is the estimation strategy to get lambda. And then with the estimate of lambda, we apply spatially weighted least squares. But the first step is to just get a, an efficient, a consistent estimate of lambda from solving the moment equations, which is basically a least squares criterion, or in this case, a quadratic form. And the second step is then to do a weighted minimization, where we need to get this weighting matrix as the inverse of the variance-covariance matrix, which is, of course, very tricky. Um, we can write this concisely as uh, argmin, so the minimum for the argument lambda of a sum of squares, this case, an unweighted sum of squares, m prime m, where m can be, after reshuffling the notation a little bit, written by a vector as a, the difference between a vector and a matrix multiplied by the parameter and the parameter squared. So it's a nonlinear set of equations. Um, this is all very complicated. I will just uh, show you what this looks like. So the two elements of the first vector are these quadratic forms in the residuals. 
using A1 for the first one and A2 for the second one. And then the elements of the matrix G are more complex in that now the spatial weights matrix W enters into the game as well. And so uh, these, uh, once these matrices are specified, we um, carry out the nonlinear least squares estimation to get an estimate for lambda. And then in the second step, we use um, these estimates um, to build the variance covariance matrix, which is a very complex expression. And again, I won't dwell on it too much, but you see here it's a weighted um, minimization. The M is the same as before. We have to solve that for lambda, and then the elements of the inverse uh, weighting, the inverse variance, the weighting matrix, are all very complex uh, trace and quadratic form expressions. And A is just are just the weights, the A1 and the A2, as the case may be. So that's, that's not an issue, but uh, sigma contains on the diagonal the spatially filtered residuals with the value lambda that, that we had before. So we use the consistent estimate from the first step to construct this weighting matrix, and it gets um, very complicated. In the OLS case, it simplifies in that the second term in this uh, matrix, uh, the weighting matrix, disappears. And then the elements, just to give you a sense, are all these complex trace manipulations which involve the spatial weights matrices W and W prime and involve the, the variance covariance matrix, which is heteroscedastic and which is replaced by the, uh, the diagonal elements of which are replaced by the squares of the spatially filtered residuals. So this is all very um, complex mathematically, but the principle is actually pretty simple and um, it's a very general result and very powerful result. We'll revisit the um, SAR-SAR model in a second, but OLS is a special case. So you have OLS with an estimate for, um, so there's no um, OLS in the sense that there are no um, endogenous variables in the regression. This is a very general result that can include endogenous variables, general endogenous variables, as, as well as spatially lag dependent variables in the regression. But if you only have exogenous variables, then it simplifies a bit and then we can find an asymptotic variance matrix for the nuisance parameter lambda which allows us then to carry out inference on lambda which is what we uh, <clears throat> like to do. Um, in sum then the basic contribution of this new set of papers is that it allows heteroscedasticity of unspecified form um, it uses the GMM weighting matrix to get the estimates for lambda. So there are actually two rounds in this. One is an unweighted uh, nonlinear least squares to get the lambda. And then the second one, second step, is a weighted nonlinear least squares. Now, in, in practice, in the software where this is implemented, this can be a little disconcerting because the GM estimator uh, doesn't have any inference for lambda. So you just get a a value for lambda, which then is used in the spatially weighted least squares, but there is no standard error and no asymptotic t value. In the GMM case, there is a value for lambda, which is used in the spatial least squares, but there also is an asymptotic standard error and an asymptotic t test on the spatial parameter itself, which is similar in, in nature and similar interpretation as the maximum likelihood case that we saw earlier.